all news music doesn't have to have trumpets and trombones and all trains don't have to just ring you know or honk and all appliances shouldn't always sound like beep 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 you know chip sounds yeah. instead of having a tune that would make people remember them and maybe like them better Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangel. Let's delve a little deeper. This is part one of my interview with Colleen Fahey. My next guest is a creative executive with deep experience in branding and marketing at multiple touch points. When she learned of CZM Son, a sonic branding agency that had created over 400 brands, she approached them about expanding to North America. She opened the Sonic Branding Agency in Chicago at the end of 2012, and in 2017 co-authored the book Audio Branding Using Sound to Build Your Brand. Since those days, her team has led CZM Son's sonic branding initiative for Atlanta, Michelin, Huggies, Morel Footwear, USAA Insurance, Sparkling Ice Drinks, a hospital, a news network, an AIDS treatment, and many more. The North American business now operates out of New York, Toronto, and Cleveland, as well as Chicago. Throughout her career, she's been creative director for leading brands in the U.S., Europe, Latin America, and Asia. Raised in Madrid, she speaks fluent Spanish, conversational French, and courageous but embarrassing Portuguese. Her name is Colleen Fahey, and if you've always wanted to ask questions about audio branding from one of the premier and oldest companies doing that these days, you'll want to hear this interview. I have no doubt that Colleen will blow our minds with her knowledge and observations about the audio branding landscape, so let's get to it. As always, if you have questions for my guest, you're welcome to reach out through the links in the show notes. And if you have questions for me, visit audiobrandingpodcast.com, where you'll find a lot of ways to get in touch. Plus, subscribing to the newsletter will let you know when the new podcasts are available. And now, here's my interview with Colleen Fahey. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Colleen. I really appreciate it. And I know that you are a very, very busy person. So thank you for making the time. <laughs> Well, thank you for inviting me here because I really respect the amount of work you're doing to promote sonic branding, and I'm glad to be one of your missionaries. <laughs> well, thank you. It's my absolute pleasure. I love doing this. So I wanted to start off the interview sort of by asking you a question that I ask a lot of people who I talk to, and I get really interesting answers, so I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about this. Do you have an early memory of how sound moved you? Yes, I do. Actually, I have a very profound one. Um, when I was four years old, my family moved from the United States to Spain. And uh, we we did it by ocean liner. Wow. So my parents and my brother and sister and I were standing on the deck saying goodbye. And suddenly this enormous sound, it was the, like the big horn sound that blasts before an ocean liner starts to move. And it came into my body and all the way down to my feet. It just was an absolute hair raising sound. And it felt like this is the end of being in the United States. We're going somewhere new. Wow. So that was a very profound sound for me. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, that's huge. That's a, a really big sound. As a four-year-old, that would just vibrate through your whole yeah. body. <laughs> yeah. But it somehow wow. also got into my psyche, too, because it was almost like a book had closed with that sound. Yeah, that makes sense. I can see how that would that would sound like that. Yeah. And, and definitely for a child. Yeah. These things are very emotional. So going on from that, how did you get interested in how sound influences us? Because that's obviously sonic branding, audio branding, like that's the whole part of it. <laughs> you know, sonic branding came to me late in my career. I had already had a really big career and had been an executive creative director, managed hundreds of people. And um, I was invited to the first sonic branding conference they had ever held in the United States. Oh, when was that? It was 
2011, I believe. Okay. And it was called the Audio Branding Congress, and it was being held up at Columbia University. And I got comped tickets. And I decided, why not go to this? It sounds interesting. I'm sure I'll learn something. Um, I was going to be in New York anyway. I live in Chicago, so I was going to be in New York for meetings. And so I decided, I'll go to this. And when I went there, the first thing that struck me was the electricity of the vibration of the conversation. People were so excited about what they were talking about, just people milling about in the hall before you go into the conference. And people were speaking language, the same language, English, but in a variety, a massive variety of accents. There were people from Holland, from India, from the UK, from Spain, from Italy. There were people from all over the world, not all over the world. Brazil was the only country that uh, represented South America at the time that I met anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and when I saw the speeches, the presentations, I was struck by how elegant the idea was that these people were so excited about, how elegant the idea of having a sound that wrapped the brand from every angle. Um, and how- Speaking of that, <laughs> the clock. <laughs> oh, you can hear my clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had several of those in my house actually that played the same tune. And I, I just, that that's a childhood memory for me. The Westminster <laughs> Chimes. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. <laughs> that is the sonic brand of this house. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the um, the conference kept going, and I could tell that the music was very profound music. People had really thought about the music. It wasn't pop. It was one kind of sound for a bank, another one for a city, another one for a train network. Uh, and how they played it in the stations and on the ads and in the waiting areas. And I thought, I have never heard about this. This is something big. I've had a good career. I'm going to stop everything I'm doing and see if I can bring this level of professionalism to the United States. And uh, that's how I ended up um, approaching Mikhail Boumediel, who is the founder of Sixième Son. And um, we worked for a while on how to put something together. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I opened Sixième Son here in Chicago. That's where it started. Wonderful. Since then, we now have offices in Toronto, New York, and Cleveland. That's a new one. Why uh, Cleveland? I'm curious. <laughs> because that's where a really good person was. Okay, that makes sense. Unlike other kinds of files, it's very easy to transfer sound files. You do not have to work in the same office. Yeah. And a lot of us work also with other offices around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've grown slowly. Sure. Didn't grow at all in 2020. <laughs> oh, well, uh, <laughs> I think sure. a lot of people had that problem. <laughs> yeah. But back on the road. So, yeah, that's sort of the story of how we got started. That's fantastic. I mean, I love that you took that immediate interest and just went for it and, and that you saw that passion. Yes, I saw their passion and then I got infected by it. <laughs> and I have to tell you, I was with someone else mm -hmm. and he was bored out of his mind. Really? He left <laughs> early. He just didn't get it, didn't like it mm -hmm. particularly and went off to visit some friends in the suburbs. What was his background? I'm curious. Marketing. Oh, really? Marketing he just didn't and business get it. building. It just wasn't his thing. And oh, okay. so I know that it, it must really appeal to some people more than others. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm one of them. Thank God. Well, yes. I think it appeals to people who have music in their souls. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that's a very nice thing to think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will believe that. <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, it, it really has become quite a thing. And um, I mean, I only started this podcast in 2019. But even then, I mean, you know, <laughs> it was it was already starting to get some acclaim, definitely. But I don't think it was as mainstream as it is now becoming. It's kind of really an interesting phenomenon. 
really, there were a couple Americans who showed up at the conference, made a little, you know, sat on a panel and then left. They were not, it wasn't something big here in the United States. It was all these other people speaking other Englishes um, <laughs> that seemed to be very excited about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Germany, especially, actually, Germany. I'm seeing a lot audio of audio branding. There. That's yeah, it was called the Audio Branding Academy. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, then later, when I wrote a book about it, I called the book Audio Branding, uh, because that's what I thought it was called. Mm -hmm. Until we started getting a lot of RFPs that said Sonic Branding. Okay. And, uh, I think I'm going to name what we do Sonic Branding going forward. Okay. It sounds like the most pragmatic thing to do. <laughs> Are you looking for ways to improve your company's or podcast's impact? You'd be surprised how powerful the use of an intentional audio branding strategy can be. Want to know more? I have a free downloadable PDF that gives you my five tips for implementing an intentional audio strategy at voiceoversandvocals.com slash audio dash branding dash strategy. That location does ask to put you on a mailing list just to send you updates on when the new podcasts come out. But if you really don't want to give your email out, I understand. Just contact me directly. My email is all over my website and I'll make sure you get that PDF without needing to sign up anywhere. If you do sign up, though, you also get access to a resources section called The Studio, where I have videos, white papers and PDFs, discounts from my guests, and snippets of audio from my guests that no one else gets to hear. So maybe it's worth your while. Totally up to you. And of course, if you're looking for voiceovers, you can get in touch with me about that, too. Now, back to the podcast. So I'm curious, what do you feel is the difference between audio branding and sonic branding? Or is no there no difference? difference? No it's difference the same thing. Sonic. It's just it's one same. term yeah, or another. Okay. Thing. Okay. Yeah. Because I mean, I called the podcast audio branding because I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I read the book, actually. I read your book. So yeah, I wanted to ask you a little about that as well, because I know that um, authoring a book is huge. <laughs> and I, you know, you, you co-authored that one, but mm -hmm. I'm wondering what the process was for that, because did you have to go and like relearn stuff? Were you just going over what you'd already done or how do you put that in words that people who aren't in this understand? Uh, we created the book in its basic format was the process that you actually have to go through, at least in my world, sure. to get to an audio brand that fits your brand, that communicates your values, that gets attention and really becomes a brand asset and can last for many years. Mm -hmm. So we have a very careful process. And so I went through the process and because I was still learning too, as well as executing, everything was fresh and new to me. So a mood board session would be fascinating to me. And I'd love to tell the story. And Please, yeah. Talking to, oh, okay. We'll, well get I'm there. We'll, we'll get there. Can uh, continue. Yeah. And, and the idea of how do people react to music in store environments and interviewing mm. store employees about that. And that was fascinating to me. And how people made the choices of the instrumentation. Everything was fascinating to me. So for me, it wasn't all theoretical. It was actually these stories that were becoming part of my world. And uh, then what we did, so we didn't get too navel gazy, was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, I love that word. <laughs> we, we got uh, guest contributors for each chapter. So people who were specialists in research, people who were academicians who had studied how. Hawaii had gone from being one of hundreds of islands in the Pacific to being specifically this branded place and how music was such an important part of it in the branding of Hawaii by the United States government. Yeah, that's <laughs> an amazing uh, story. <laughs> yeah, so we got people from with all kinds of different points of view on music and sonic branding mm -hmm. and branding, just plain branding too. Yeah. So that um, that sort of um, process that you go through, uh, you know, now that you've had several years to sit in it, <laughs> where, where do you start? You start with the values of the brand. You start by really understanding what that brand 
stands for. And then you look at it in the context of its competitors. And you start comparing how they use sound. You certainly don't want to be in the codes of that category, like in diapers, you'll hear ukuleles and guitars and toy pianos. Yeah. And in hospitals, you'll hear grand pianos. And in healthcare, you'll often hear kind of emotionless, light classical tracks, mm -hmm. usually stock music. Uh, so there's codes of the categories that symbolize things in those categories, I suppose. And you're trying not to be like that because a brand- You want it to stand out. A brand needs to stand out, be recognized, yeah. um, and differentiate. So the music has to help you differentiate in the, the way that's appropriate to the values of the brand. So how do you, uh, how do you mix sounds with music? Or like, do they play a part? They do. I, I'm they just, do or they can. Yeah, I'm just. They don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. But let's say you have a brand that is saying we're always welcoming the community. Come in, be part of us. Um, or we have a lot of people supporting you in your effort to get better or whatever it might be. You, you could use humming. You could use claps. You could use whistling. You can use snaps. You, you can actually make the sounds part of the music. You can weave them into the music. Um, and those are not the only ways to do humanity, but they're kind of literal, but they, they work, they make it warmer. And maybe if you're trying to say we're both scientific and very warm, you start mixing, you know, different kind of very precise digital elements with more warm human things. So sure. you, your whole quest is toward meaning. And then, then once you get that piece of music that's been worked, worked on through mood boards and through different, different composers working on it, um, and the client has chosen one, then you have your DNA and your, your DNA just says, what kind of energy is this brand? What kind of instrumentation? What kind of simplicity or richness? Um, and of course, there's a motif running through it, which is your ends it and is your audio logo or your sonic logo, because it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I always just I always just wondered because I know people use them interchangeably, but I always wondered if it was the same thing. Um, but yeah, you you had mentioned mood board sessions. Yeah. And I'm really curious as to how that works. How do you do that? Okay, well, I'll tell you because I was learning that the one that stuck in my head the best was the city of Atlanta, the Atlanta uh, Convention and Tourism Bureau. And they felt they needed an audio brand because they had recently won the opportunity to be the city that hosted the people who plan conventions for cities. And that was very important. That's a big, big one. opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> and th that's when we started to create their sonic identity. And they wanted to really say that they were diverse and surprising and unique, that they were leaders and they had authority, and that they were had the warmth of the South and the humanity of that. So we created, our, our strategists created three mood boards, one for leadership and authority. One, leadership and authority was so fun and interesting and enlightening for me because we started with real sounds of authority, boom, boom, boom. And um, they almost jumped back. It was like, that is not us. We do not have that kind of authority. That is New York City. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then, as we listen to different ways that music can be authoritative and a steady rhythmic base, I believe was how we ended up kind of saying, okay, this is the quality of authority we have. And then we got to the question of warmth and humanity. They have a gospel tradition. That was 
got pretty easy for, for us. And there was also one of surprise and surprise can go in any direction. Uh, but one of the snippets of sound that we had in our mood board, which is not a board at all, it's really a playlist. One of the snippets was a track. It was a Rihanna track. And the music, instead of coming together, was layered. Like everybody sounded good, but they didn't sound like they were all playing the same thing. And that was just a big aha moment for the team that was listening. They were just like, that is how we do it. <laughs> that's Atlanta. Oh, we're never going to use a Rihanna song. That's her business. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but we had the idea. That's how we're going to build this. It'll be a structure for her. So that was a mood boards that turned into an identity. Now, when you say mood board, I'm picturing like a whiteboard with people making notes on it. But you're talking about like I'm talking about people having to, to really sit and use their ears. Okay. And everybody loves doing it. And they're amazed how exhausted they are at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a big thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's amazing. So once you figured out the moods that you're going for, which I guess helps you with both the brand DNA and the emotions that it you helps want you people brief. to feel. It, it helps you brief the creatives. Yeah. So you get your main DNA, but you need different feelings for different touch points. Good point. So let's say you're working on tax software or something like that. Mm -hmm. You want people to calm down, not be so angry because they're angry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, whereas maybe if you're doing something that is trying to be uplifting, then your on hold music want to be, you know, positive, optimistic. So, so the mood is often affected by the touch point that you're working with. Interesting. Do you have an example of something like that? Uh, for USAA, we did sort of a, the USAA brand and energy is, is pretty high and happy and uh, camaraderie and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, so we created and got approved and it got implemented some music for their on hold, but suddenly they started getting complaints. And you know what it was? What? It was that some of the people who call into USAA are reporting deaths. And because they serve the military audience often, the, they could be young people's deaths. Oh, no. They have 100 people who only take those calls. Mm -hmm. And the music was so wrong for them. Mm. Just yeah. terrible. So we did that. Based on the same DNA, we put the music into a much more soothing tone much more caring tone. Mm -hmm. um, so the mood of the music affects, is affected by what's the TV commercial like? Is it a storyline that starts kind of quietly and then builds to attention and you might have a little bit of a tense moment in the music and then resolves and ends happy? The music has to tell that story. You can't just be blah, 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 playing it along. Sure, yeah. Um, so where else do these elements appear? Uh, you know, we know the usual ones, right? So radio, television, online. Um, on hold. You know, on yeah. hold. Exactly. Um, where else do you see it? Do people well, use these in like um, Google Home and Alexa and that kind of stuff? Not in those specific ones, but yes, they definitely use them in apps. Okay. Uh, sure uses them in their headphones, their oh. top line of headphones. Like okay. On, off error mm -hmm. they they it comes from a same dna um the so you can use it in your product sounds for sure you can use it in your social media you can have a library of tracks that are already built here's a serious track here's a um happy track here's a track with a lot of people cheering and you know and so that your social media team can just grab 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 and uh you use it in meetings and events. That's a very good place to use it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Wa walk in music to a meeting, mm -hmm. then somebody rising to the stage and you try to, you know, build that excitement. Sure. And then transitions between speakers. Mm -hmm. So. Very good use. Let's see. There's a lot of 
there's so many different we of course the first one we ever did was for a expo booth oh okay for the videos on your expo booth yeah yeah and now that people are doing podcasts and i see you have music in your podcast I for do. instance yes and so we would do for one of our clients we'd do a podcast kit mm -hmm. we did the podcast music well actually it's the branded music that they could use for a podcast for women in voice nice so that's probably you uh, yeah <laughs> Well, hoping to participate. Yeah, that I'll, I'll hear it. <laughs> mm -hmm. That'll be very cool. I know that we're all dealing with a lot of stuff these days. So I particularly wanted to acknowledge those that have taken the time to leave honest reviews of this podcast. Skyle Renee, I think it's Renee, it's spelled R-E-N-E, -E, so that's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> I hope I got it right. Had this to say. Worth it. This podcast is so good that I just want to sit and stay in my car a little longer. Thanks, Jody. You're very welcome, Skyle. And thank you so much for taking the time to write a review. Now, back to the show. Didn't you do the branding? Um, I read this in the book. I thought that you did branding for a train, like a train station. Yes. The, the most famous sonic brand in France. Mm -hmm. that people can, un can get it with two notes immediately, partly because of the texture. It's SNCF, which is the National Railroad. Do, 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 do. Okay. Is the sound that you hear it before an announcement. Okay. And it just tunes your ear to listen to that announcement. And it, when the doors close, there's a version of it. And on the TV, there's a version. And on the phone hold. And yeah, it's, it's beautifully used. Uh, sure. And it's it's designed for the setting of a train station where there's going to be a lot of loud, low rumbling sounds. So it's higher. And there's a woman's voice in it, which calm, often helps calm people. Mm -hmm. uh, and people are not calm in a travel situation usually. No. no they're they're going to lose their luggage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get yeah. on the wrong car, all that thing, <laughs> all that stuff. They kind of have that kind of a sonic thing going on for the TTC here in Toronto, too. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Before you, like, before the doors are going to close, you know, <laughs> all that. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, it's a great place to be using it. I mean, definitely when people need to remember something, when they need to pay attention to something, it's definitely helpful to have that musical sort of, you know. Yeah. Listen to me. And you don't have to sound <laughs> like everybody else. It's yeah. all news music doesn't have to have trumpets and trombones. And all trains don't have to just ring, you know, or honk. And all appliances shouldn't always sound like beep, 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 you know, chip sounds yeah. instead of having a tune that would make people remember them and maybe like them better. Yeah. Have you worked on appliances? I haven't worked on appliances. I'm hoping to very soon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping for that for you because <laughs> I you. think they need it. <laughs> I know. I know. They need yes, it. Well, I don't want to get on a rant about <laughs> beeping sounds in my house. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm actually having clubhouse discussions and have interviewed someone about the beeping in hospitals. So, yes. Talk about that. Yeah. That's what. That's a really interesting, well, the, the, that the machines that are in hospitals have been using the same sounds since pretty much the 50s. And there are so many more machines in a hospital room now than there ever were before. Yeah. And uh, this fellow's uh, mother-in-law called it a, she's a nurse, she called it a beeping hellscape. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah yeah so his name is michael schutz he's been experimenting and talking about this um and uh he's a, a percussionist but um marimba we we talked about this oh, i think yeah. briefly yeah marimba yeah that's a beautiful it sound. is yeah it's beautiful and uh and he's a really good musician it's and it's also kind of cheerful and it is uplifting and, yeah. yeah but i think what he ended up discovering was that allowing the notes to decay a little so that they could like play and then fade as opposed to cutting them off immediately was much easier a sound on our ears mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. just the simple beep, right? So that's part of, I'm thinking, what appliances are going to have to deal with. <laughs> you know, there's something 
that we do a lot is healthcare advertising or healthcare sonic branding. And that's one thing we almost always for healthcare, the notes continue. Mm -hmm. they, they go softer and softer and softer or something like that. They don't cut. It's kind of too like deadly. <laughs> yeah. Other brands love to cut, you know, to snap people's sure. attention back to the television set or something. But yeah, in healthcare, we never, <laughs> never cut those notes right off. Yeah. And yet they do that all the time in hospital rooms mm -hmm. where people are trying to recover. Mm -hmm. and that's not helping them. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'm really hoping that uh, his work gets paid more attention because it yeah, needs yeah. it like now. It needs yeah. it now. <laughs> Cross yeah. fingers for that. Yeah, exactly. There's so much going on in the world of sound. It's just so fascinating to me, this whole, the whole idea of all of this. <laughs> um, but I also wanted to ask you where you feel an audio brand can be taken for a company. Like, what do you think it does for a company's image? The thing that an audio brand can do is access people at a very immediate and and um, almost without their knowing that they're being influenced, that it comes in through your ears, which are right next to your brain. They, it comes in very fast, but then it hangs around a long time. And sonic brands can also hang around for a very long time. All you have to do is keep refreshing them. But Barry Manilow did State Farm. 50 years ago. He did a lot of stuff, didn't he? Uh, he did. Yeah. Um, so the thing about having an asset like that, it becomes a real value to the brand. I always like to talk about Intel when I think about this, because mm -hmm. Intel is something you can't taste, you can't hear, you can't see, you can't smell. How did they become so well known as a brand? Having billions in brand value. Do you think it's because of that oval with their name in it? <laughs> no, I, I no. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it has to do with that dun, 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 dun sound that they make. Yeah. With their special texture. Definitely. Um, and, and how often you hear it. Yeah. Like, I mean, for, for a good 25 years there, you were hearing it in any tech commercial at the end of every tech commercial right. you heard. Yeah. That and was these, a these were good strategy. Huge. Yeah, these partnerships yeah. that they created. Yeah. yeah, what a great, what a brilliant, just brilliant. And and yeah, because you heard it so consistently and so often, it became that earworm you could never get rid of. But like you said, it's subconscious. So right. it's not as bad as having one song in your head. <laughs> no, it's... Because that it, could drive you crazy. <laughs> well, the thing about it is that you're communicating without engaging your forebrain. Mm -hmm. So people can hear without listening. And that is such a wonderful asset to a brand to be able to- Okay, ex explain that though. Okay. How do you hear without listening? <laughs> so you and I are having a conversation. I am very much listening to you today right now. Mm -hmm. yep. But there are other sounds. It's spring, there's some bird song that I'm not paying conscious attention to. I see, okay. But probably some part of me is responding to the fact that it's it's a spring day and the birds seem to be active, happy, maybe not happy. I don't know what they're doing. But well, if they're singing, we know we're safe, right? <laughs> yeah, we feel safe. So a lot of music enters you without you having to tune in and give it attention and take attention away from something else. It's just something you're absorbing. And isn't that nice for a brand to be able to to speak to you without bothering you? Yeah, that would be really nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's one of the great assets, aspects of uh, audio branding. Sure. And, and it just seeps into your subconscious and it you remember it. Yeah. It can also pull your attention. If you, if you, we do a lot of work with helping people take the music and put it into a TV commercial. And if there's a familiar sound, like your Sonic logo at the beginning, maybe somewhere in the middle, 
it'll pick up people's attention from whatever they're doing, washing their dishes or texting or whatever they're, it, it helps bring attention. So it can both not require attention and help get attention and last for long decades. Yeah, yeah. Um, Intel was at the end though, right? So I guess what they ended up doing was just being so repetitious. <laughs> they, they're they repetitious, but they have also evolved. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the, the sound keeps up with the times. Yeah. And so does the one that you referenced before, the one about the, the trains, the yeah. train system. It started out with the idea of mobility with a human face. But then it went to another place, which was more eco-mobility. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and the instrumentation changed, more acoustic. And then about three years later, it really became about convenience. We're going to get you there faster. And so it came, you know, sort of more zippy sounds entered the logo. But they kept the basic structure, but they kept evolving it as the brand took on new meanings. This has been part one of our interview. I hope you'll tune in next week for part two. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time. Until next time.